Okay, we're going to continue here with uh, probably part two here. We have got the engine welded. Um, you can see they did a pretty good job on it. Looks like they arc welded this one. And uh, I think the plug's in there permanently. I'm not going to worry about it. This uh, crank that was over here has been nicely welded. Looks pretty good. I have gotten the block cleaned up. And I have pulled the bearings out that were loose. I will show you that. Here's one of them. And I just used a socket and a bolt and a little adapter here, a bushing driver, to, uh, to pull these out with. And let's get a look at those here and um, show you what I've done with those. All right, here's the cam shaft. This is the new bushing. Remember, this one was so loose. Um, what I ended up doing was filing a little bit here. I put this in the lathe and just literally filed this down. I bought these new bushings from Flywheel Supply, and I bought them 10 thousandths under size. So uh, I had to, uh, to work the shaft down to take up the wear, and now that, that fits very nicely. Um, I think it's going to be just fine. I'll get those pushed in later. And um, those, uh, those fit nice, not a lot of slop. So that is the cam. Here is the other one that I decided to go ahead and change to. This is the governor. And I have, uh, again, this one's unevenly worn. In the center, it was actually larger than it was over on the, each end. So that helped me to uh, just file the center down and got it to fit real well uh, on there. And uh, works great. We'll push those back in next and uh, get those uh, this part of it back together. But that will take care of our sloppy gear and uh, sloppy camshaft in there. And we'll be able to start assembling the engine and cleaning everything up and getting it back, uh, hopefully making smoke again soon. All right, I'll show you the setup here. This uh, is just a socket with a bolt going through it, some washers here, give me some flexibility. And around on this side, hopefully you can see there's the bushing being pushed in. And uh, I put a little Loctite on it. This one's going in a little looser than the ones, the other ones. So that's kind of the setup to pull this in. So pretty simple, really. So I just use a ratchet socket and that bushing pulls right in. I'll be able to see it and pull it up flush there. Now I'm at the end of my threads here so I've got to add some more spacers I'll probably add my longer socket here so I've got to make a change for that be right back okay to save you a little pain and agony I went ahead and pushed the bearing back in there so you don't have to watch all that and I've got it set up to where these points right here are pretty much equal that way when the thing runs um, it uh, operates like this and this follower is pretty centered on the face of the cam so I think that's working great and uh, that's my preliminary setup I'll go ahead and reassemble the engine now and, and make sure everything else is going to go okay and we'll go from there so on to the next step. One thing left to do. Is on this shaft. There's a groove. And where I showed you that little cutout in the bushing. 
you can just barely make it out here you may not be able to see it but uh, there is a groove that spirals across here and what that does is that actually grabs oil and brings it through and uh, slings it inside here and then it drops out of here it lubricates the face the follower the hit and miss mechanism in here and stuff like that so it, both of these bring oil from the inside there across here through a spiral cut and distribute it in here so I'm gonna get a Dremel that uh, original ones wore off so I'm gonna reestablish that uh, spiral cut on there so I'll do that next Okay, there's our there's our oil pump. Pick up oil over here, carry it over here. I'll make sure that that's smoothed off. Put it back together. Well, while you guys weren't looking, I went ahead and bolted everything back together. Shimmed up the the mains. Here's the shims that the mains use. And uh, so I got them all shimmed up to where you can lift on the flywheels and just feel a little bit of clearance or a little bit of wiggling there. This is a rod shim. Ended up putting the same, same shim packs back in that was in it. And uh, ended up taking one out of the rod and one out in the mains. So it was shimmed pretty close to start with. So uh, I didn't bore you with putting it all back together. We'll just uh, we'll go in and take a look at these timing marks here. I'll show you what to look for there. All right, I've got you set up looking through the spokes here of the flywheel. And I've marked those uh, marks down here on the crank and the cam with some white paint. And it is actually stamped in the side of the, of the gear there. So uh, you'll be able to see that. And then there's also two marks here, um, one on the mag and one on the cam. So you get those all lined up. And then to confirm your timing for your ignition, you come around here to the flywheel side and I've just got, I don't have the cylinder head on it yet, but I've got the uh, push rod stuck in here to show you. Um, your mag should trip when your spark line right here lines up with the push rod and then as you come on around through the power stroke into the exhaust stroke your exhaust close should be there the exhaust open should be there let me go through that one more time. We just fired right there. Exhaust closed, exhaust open. And the point is, once you have the engine together, head on it and everything, you watch the valves work and all that, there's a point at which your uh, push or all your rocker comes in contact and goes away from the stem of the valve so these marks are pretty handy just for setting it up and you you know if you want to adjust anything like the, the time that the thing trips the uh, igniter you can adjust this slide this back and forth so anyway that's uh, basically how it works let's take a look at the cylinder head I ended up grinding the valves and just lapping in the seats they turned out pretty good. Um, got the new springs here. We'll get those put on. And we'll get the head put on it. But uh, 
Anyway, the exhaust is this one here. Shove him in there. This is the intake, and this one's even even labeled intake on the inside. It's cast into the valve there, so that's a no-brainer. New springs. They look pretty good. This is the exhaust side here. It just goes on with a washer and a cotter. And let's get uh, the intake on. Same thing, washer and a cotter. And I'll set those car pins and we'll get the head put on. Got the surface cleaned up real good here. And uh, this gasket that I bought has got uh, a real good firing ring on it. So I'm not going to put any sealer on it at this time. I'm just going to put it on dry and uh, see if it holds. If it doesn't hold, uh, I may have to come back and reseal it. I don't think it's going to hurt anything uh, if it doesn't hold with that metal firing ring. I don't think it will blow. I've always wanted to find out. I want to find out with this, this build. So get the heads on here or the nuts on here and get this head torqued up. Get our cutter pin set. And I've got to put a pin in this. Get him on there, and we'll be good to go here very shortly. And uh, I'll finish the uh, finish the assembly here, torque everything down, bring you back for the startup. Okay, guys, we're finishing up the Model E here. I'm getting ready to get it set on the its cart. They provide a cart they want it set on, so I'm getting ready to set it up on the cart. I've got it over here strapped up, ready to lift. And I'll give you some pictures of it or some video of it here uh, when I get it on the cart. Then we'll start it up, see how it sounds. So, got a new little twist here going on. Um, we're going to weigh this thing while we got a hold of it here on the hoist. And uh, let me show you the hoist I've got here. It's just a, a gantry crane and uh, it, uh, it works pretty well. And uh, got a little winch on it here and uh, running up to a pulley there and uh, down here to the, down here to the hoist uh, where we got it uh, hooked up. So let's, uh, let's turn this on here. Let's see what we weigh here. Let's see. Let it go through its little motions there. There we go. We're set to pounds. Now I do have it zeroed for the rigging here. Uh, this pipe and the rigging weighs a little bit. So let me hit the button here and uh, we'll uh, start lifting on it and see what happens here. Okay, it is off the floor now. And we are at, I'm going to chase it around here a little bit, 224 and a half pounds. I thought it weighed a little more than that. It feels heavier than that when I'm trying to drag it around, but uh, I guess that's what a John Deere Model E uh, with just the skid uh, weighs. So let me get it stabilized here and pulled up a little bit and I'll get it set over here on the cart. Yeah, roll the cart under it here a little bit. I'll let it down on the cart here. There we go. Back down close to zero again. Make sure it's sitting square on the cart. It seems to be. Looks good. All right, let me get it uh, unrigged here and. Uh, We'll see if we can get it run, get you a look at it, and see if we can get it run here.
You know, I was curious on that weight, 225 pounds, 225 and a half pounds is what I, uh, what I measure with the scale just then. So I come over here to the web, got to look, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but here on the smokestack site, there's your shipping weights. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. John Deere E is 226 pounds. So my little scale isn't that far off. I just wanted to come over and look that up on the web and, uh, you know, you can believe everything on the web, you know, so uh, <laughs> anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. All right, I pulled it over to the doorway here. The lighting isn't the best in the world, so I apologize for that. Let me choke it with this piece of saw blade here. We'll roll it through a couple times. That should maybe do it. Well, guys, I hope you like this series on a little John Deere. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please uh, subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. And uh, hit the like button, all that stuff. It helps the channel. So uh, we'll uh, catch you on the next one.